Hello, welcome back to Let Supreme Ghost Thief 2X. We are playing Down Among Dead Men today, mission 8, no, mission 7, ahead of myself here. Um, and in my opinion, this is the best mission so far in the campaign. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. If you haven't played it before, then of course I suggest that you play it before watching. But if you're here to watch, then uh, hopefully you enjoy this. Let's load up the end of a question of knowledge and watch the briefing. These Hammerites, from what I can tell, are extremely fanatical, and just as hypocritical. Apparently these self-righteous gasbags are losing their foothold in the city. They seem to have quite a hold on Sunnyport, but I get the sense they're worried that what's happening in the city could happen here. They decided to store all of their precious junk where no sane person would think to look. In an old, abandoned mausoleum just outside of town. Out of sight, out of mind, as they say. However, the plan seems to be backfiring on them. Cavador dispatched Bishop Onum and some of his cronies a few weeks ago to try to find this orb of St. Basmus, and none of them are returned. It sounds like the place has become too fraught with undead for a head-on assault. I guess I can't blame them for trying. The Hammers believe the orb, if properly used, might give them power to overcome these mechanists and their machines. At least, that's the excuse that Cavador seems to have fed to Onum. Given that these two seem to be suspicious of one another, I wouldn't be surprised if the story was bogus. But that doesn't change the fact that I need to make it down there myself if I'm going to get the orb. If I can snag it, I should be able to use it to attract the hammers to the smugglers without attracting attention to myself. I have to get in there quickly, and get out even more quickly. Else I might end up like Onum and the others. So, um, I'm not sure if I misunderstood what was going on in A Question of Knowledge, but I'm a little bit confused, and I always have been, by the story here. Because when we got the objectives in the last mission to find the map, uh, following the readable in Brother Cavador's office, or the High Priest's office, uh, the incentive to do that was to beat Bishop Onam to getting the orb. But in this briefing, it says that they were dispatched a couple of weeks ago. So I'm really uncertain as to why it was a race against going down here before Brother Onam to now being several weeks later. Because I assume that as soon as we left the Hamrite Temple, that Zaya would want to go down to the mausoleum as quickly as possible. So, um, I always found that there was a discrepancy there in the story. Maybe just Zaya assumed that Onam hadn't gone yet, and then after that last mission, realized that he had gone uh, a few weeks prior. But the readables didn't really make that indication in the last mission. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe I've missed something in one of the previous readables that made that clear. But I always imagined that Onam and us would go down almost at the same time. But obviously they haven't. So, find Brother Onam, or what's left of him, and see if you can gain any useful information from him. Recover the orb of St. Basmus to aid in framing the smugglers. The dead have no need of their valuables. Grab 900 in loot while you're down there. You remember the note in, cathedral, in the cathedral library mentioning that they were also storing some type of elemental crystal there as well. See if you can find it. Escape the mausoleum and get back to the caves where you started. So here we go. Now, when I played this mission for the first time and ghosted it for the first time back in 2005 when it was released I never ended up going for Supreme Ghost in this mission and I will explain why that is um, there was something that I thought was needed that isn't needed that would automatically bust Supreme now granted due to slightly updated rules in the last few years 
that actually doesn't bust supreme even if you take it. Um, so I'll explain that as well as we go through it. Uh, so we will definitely go for supreme in this mission here. Now, can it be supreme ghosted? I am not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, we are in the process of discussing the rules a little bit and might clarify the rules somewhat. So I think it should be... We have to take a couple of busts, but I think that they should be excused. But strictly following the rules, they are not. So I will again explain that when I get to it, and um, I will refer to the, to the rules as we go through. But besides that... Uh, which is an inex inescapable bust. You'll see it when when I talk about it. The rest of the mission should be possible to Supreme Ghost. So I will definitely Supreme Ghost the vast majority of this. Now, this is, of course, the first um, real undead mission we have in this campaign, but it's a very, very well-made one. I would say it's a, it's a mix, a blend between uh, Down in the Bone Horde and Return to the Cathedral, both from Thief Gold. I think that they mix those two and the feeling of those two very well, but also makes it new and fresh, but still has an homage to the old missions here. So we obviously are not going to buy anything and pick up anything, uh, and I would, wouldn't say that you need to for Ghost either, but for Supreme we can, so we won't. Let's save. And take a look at the map. So the map is fairly cryptic, but it'll fill in with some names and details as we go through it. Um, this is the main map. We start here um, in the south, in the caves. Some Burrick Caves and stuff down here too. Uh, this is an area that has a church. And then you have the graveyard to the west of that. And to the east, you have the front yard to the mausoleum, which uh, is this. The mausoleum, though, is not supposed to be entered from this side. You can and we will, but we won't do that right now. There's a little side cave here as well. Then down below, you have two main sections. Okay, this is uh, actually the upper section here, where you have in the north the torture chamber area with some storage rooms. Um, like I said, I will, and I will point this out as we go through, but uh, some of these will be named as we go along. If you, let's see, if you go down the staircase here, you will come out the staircase here. So you will enter a foyer um, in this upper level underground. Uh, and that can take you to some grave chambers or tombs in the southwest here, and this is another staircase that will lead you down to the lower level. This is the bottommost level here. And uh, to the east is where we can find the uh, proper entrance to the mausoleum. Um, but there's a key that is required to get in there. And there's a lava cave here and another crypt and some more tombs in the north. So much of it is going to be um, contained underground where we're going to loot crypt basically like a, a Tomb Raider style mission. In the beginning here we can see just a head on a casket. Nothing else here. Here there's a headless zombie. Not sure if he can see us. No. So he's blind, I thought so. Oh. That might have been an alert. I wasn't 100% sure there. Yeah, that is an alert. So he can't see us, even without a head. Through here, you can actually see the mausoleum. And there's even a cracked window. And uh, occasionally you can see some activity going on in there. So I think it's nice when they are connecting different areas, even without making you able to to physically be there. So I think those are alerts. I don't think those were alerts, but I don't want to... I just don't want to... Stanley bust so early. So this guy just has a random patrol, you know, crisscross around this cave. 
This puddle looks a little weird with the new textures, but there's a water arrow in there. So we're just moving west right now. Some openings here. I don't think you're gonna get out of here. Not 100% though. Some mining equipment, some debris laying around. Here's a burrick, and here's another water arrow in this puddle. Okay, it's a dead hammerite. Long do I wait for the return of our party led by Brother Onam. I fear the things bode ill and waiting here guarding the entrance has taken its toll on me. We managed to restore some power to the ancient temple. However, the foul undead seemed to short the lights out constantly. The crystal of evil enchantments, which we expected to find in the crypt, was discovered laying in the old cemetery. The undead did flee its shining power, but Brother Onam thought it best to leave the unholy shard in one of the graveyard crypts, despite its usefulness against these abominations. So that's interesting, because that's the crystal that we need. The weapons of the Builder are true and sure, and he needs not the aid of pagan sorcery to protect us. The others have descended into the depths below to seek the orb of St. Basmus. The darkness of this unholy place seeps into my very skin. Acolyte Soran. Soran. Alright, so that Burke is going to head into this cave, and we need to go there too, so I'll wait for him. So, that expedition is what reminds me of the lost expedition in the Bone Horde. Some more remains down here, bones and stuff. We are primarily in here to take this a silver nugget, our first piece of loot worth 50. If we head up here, we can see into the graveyard. So again, I like when the mission is tied together in various ways. So we see at least four zombies and a sleeping one as well. And what looks like a... What is that? A floating skull? Okay, we want to follow that brick out a bit quicker than this. Maybe it turns around down there, I think so. Yeah. Okay, down here is another water arrow in this puddle. And now we are reaching the end of the caves. Ugh, someone could use a bath. So this is the church. The front doors there are pickable. Um, and we need to head into the church, but I don't want to pick them if I don't have to. So we are actually going to climb the roof here. Oh, I was hoping he would go left. I'm going to show you a couple of things first that will... ...help my discussion. Okay. Alright, let's um, go in here and take a look. We got an alert from him, but that doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'll reload. So this is then... Uh, we moved east from the church, and then this is the mo mausoleum facade. So it's the front yard. So this is the mausoleum, and this is an area we'll go to later on. And uh, there's no door entrance to the mausoleum from here, 
you can notice that on the top floor on the left there is an open window. So that would be an alternate way to get in if you want to, but there are uh, re uh, stackables required to get up there, so that is only a last resort for us. Let's head down here real quick first. So let's actually see what he does when he attacks us. Okay, some of the zombies in this game actually throws up at you. And if you hit them, they actually start losing limbs. See? And they keep walking like that. So that's an addition to, to Necrorage, I assume. Let's head in here. So this is... Uh, we're coming from the east now into the main foyer. Now I want to show you an animation that comes as you walk into this top area of this foyer. If I cannot have you, none shall. Okay. So I love the voice on, uh, this is Mausoleus, and uh, he apparently killed his family, how gruesome that is. But that explosion actually sets off and triggers a couple of zombies in this area. See? How they're in hunt mode now. So they hear that explosion. Now I know that's scripted, uh, and normally scripts like that are excused. However, there's a way that we can avoid that. So I would say that if you can avoid a script that triggers alerts, you should. So, what that means is that I'm not going to come down into the foyer from the east there. Uh, this zombie and the zombie that we uh, dismembered, uh, they leave this room temporarily and are behind closed doors, so they won't alert. But there's no door here to seal these other zombies off, so they will hear that explosion and uh, that'll alert them. So you can see here that this is the actual remains of his family then. If I can't have you, no one no one shall, isn't that what he said? No one can. So let's reload. So we're not going to head that way now. He saw me in there. All right, the only thing that we're picking up in here is a moss arrow. But we can actually head into the church. <sighs> okay, not sure what happened there, but I should be able to mantle up there pretty easily. This cannot be done in old dark. So you have to do this in new dark. So in old dark, you're gonna have to, I believe at least, pick the lock on the front doors, but that's okay. So you can head over here. Now, to get into the church in this way, you can head in through this hole. Um, there's a patroller in there, but they're not hostile. Instead, we're gonna drop down here. So we're now on the west side and we have an entrance into the graveyard. Yeah, let's head in here real quick. So there's quite a few patrollers in here, so we just have to wait them out. <clears throat> they some seem to be on a sort of a similar patrol here, which is good. Now there are three different locked chambers, um, only one of which we actually have to go into. This is not one of those, but I'll show you what's in there. I don't like to pick locks if I can't relock them, so I'm going to skip that one. The only thing of interest in this, this is the northeast chamber, is 
Mausoleus' right leg. Now, in this mission, there is an optional objective, which I will trigger a little bit later, um, that requires you to get five pieces of his body and actually destroy them to get rid of Mausoleus, and all the undead are actually destroyed at the same time. So I will point out where those different uh, items are. This is the right leg. There are two legs, two arms, and a head. <clears throat> and I will show you also how destroying it actually affects the environment. You can read all these um, gravestones here. There's different names on them. Um, there's no actual information. It's just names. What a, what saw me there? So that's where we have to get in. Okay, I might be able to go here. No, I might not. Yeah, that's an alert. All of their patrols are randomized, and if you're unlucky, then you'll have to wait for an opening. And it's also a little bit annoying because I can't see where they are. Let's try that. Have to wait here a little bit. The problem is that they give alerts for the sounds they make, the idle sounds they make in that garage are similar to their alert sounds, and that can be quite misleading. This one we have to pick open. This is the northwest tomb. Okay. In here you have two fire arrows. This is a sleeping zombie. And uh, zombies in Thief 2 are a lot easier to sneak by because they don't have that far of a proximity trigger. <clears throat> so you can get up to them pretty close. And it's the head, I think, the head region that detects you. So two fire arrows. And then this is a tomb that opens. And here is actually our first objective. <gasps> this is the uh, crystal that was talked about in the readable. Now, here comes the problem. This crystal is a light source. When you take it, the light goes out, and your light gem is significantly impacted by that, so it definitely is a light source. So we complete the objective, uh, but the objective says, find the elemental crystal which might be handy for use against the undead. So we are supposed to find it and take it, obviously. Uh, now, we are removing a light source, and that is not allowed. Uh, due to the supreme rules. So is that a bust? Um, strictly speaking, 
it is a bust. Because you are removing a light source and that's not allowed. However, it's an objective to take this. Um, the rules for both regular Ghost and Supreme says that only what is explicitly stated to do in the objectives are going to be excused. That is a rule that's put in there in order to prevent people from taking busts that lead up to the objective or that follows the objective that comes after and not excuse those just because they feel they have to take that bust in order to get to the objective. And that I completely agree with. But that's not what this is. The objective here has a light source attached to it and in order to take the objective of course you have to remove the light source uh, and it's not like the light source goes away you, st you, you still have the object it's just in your inventory but you're removing the light source from the environment so personally I think and we are in the process of maybe changing the rules or clarifying the rules a little bit on this I think that automatic consequences that are instant to taking a mandatory objective or completing a mandatory objective should be excused. Because obviously there's no objective that will ever say take the elemental crystal and also remove the light source. No objective is ever going to say that. So if you have an objective that is a light source, that's an automatic bust for Supreme. Because there's no way to skip this, you, you have to do it. It's different if it's a loot item that emits light because then you can choose to skip it because only the the required amount for the mission is required not specific loot items so then you can skip it and be fine and not have to bust supreme but to automatically bust supreme just because the objective has a property with it that is not allowed i think that since objectives prevail in all the rule sets then automatic <coughs> busts that are similar to scripts should be excused um, but it doesn't really matter you know whether it's a bust or not we can't do this any better so i am going to record this in various installments so by the by the end of the mission i might have an answer for you on what the ruling actually is saying but right now it is technically a bust but i think it's a silly one we closed it yeah The only other thing we have to do in the graveyard is take two pieces of loot, and they are on the other side, over there to the right. Here's a goblet. 15, total 65. And then there's one more tomb there that we have to get into. These you can highlight and read. Like Serac Nightborn, White Magi with immense wisdom. You can read all these. Tengor family. This one is a an Easter egg. Rest in peace, Looking Glass Studios. Here lies LGS, you live on in our hearts and minds. See if we can deal with that one. But I don't think any other ones are referencing anything that I know about. Just random names. In here. Get a gold goblet there. And we're done. This tomb is pickable, but we're not going to go in there now. I will show you how to get from the other side of that, actually, because you can take that to head into the underground tombs. But I don't want to pick that lock, and that's not a door that is necessary to pick. So the gold goblet brought us up to 90. Okay, now we're going to head into the church. <sighs> Here is Mausoleus's right leg. 
So that's the second out of five pieces for his body. This ghost down here is not uh, hostile. So this is then the church. There's a floating, uh, floating book, illuminating book here as well. So these are the front doors, the pickable ones. Always wish they put something up on the rafters here, but they didn't. This is a sleeping zombie, I believe. Um, there's no valuables in here, but there's a readable. Temple of the Light, Prayers and Hymns of Radiance, 12. Builder keep the dark at bay, stoke the fire to light of day. Evil grows in trickster's night, be gone undead, we will thee fight. Okay, there are a couple of things up on these rafters that I can show you. Here's a moss arrow. I believe that up here there should be a moss arrow too. Or something like that, anyway. Yeah, there's a moss arrow. I don't think there's anything else on the other side here. <laughs> That hurts, but let me see. <gasps> no, not on this side. But there were two moss arrows there up on the... the different rafters. We are going to descend into the underground tombs this way. This is a very convenient elevator. It's in the top position, so we have to leave it there when we end the mission. Okay, so now we are headed into the northwest section, uh, west of the torture chamber. So, just like in Return of the Cathedral, all the doors here automatically close. We're going to leave this elevator down here because we're going to come back this way. So they automatically close. That can be a little bit dangerous because if you don't want it to close, then they might actually alert uh, other enemies. Okay, I'm going to show you what's in here first. This is a pickable door that I'm not going to pick because there's no loot in there. So in here, there is only... is there? A, yeah, there's a moss arrow up there. You can see that. And um, in here... a secret that opens a panel in here. It's a hidden study. Here's a healing oil, and there's a readable. The Journal of Merrick, Priest of the Temple of Light. More murmurings from the direction of the tombs last night. The taint of Mausoleus is spreading. The wards I maintain serve to keep the dead resting, but for how long they can stem the tide. Even the Forgotten King's heart seems to be losing some of its power. The Temple of Light is the last bastion of defense against this evil. Um, if we fall, then eventually who knows what profane visions shall roam the night, haunting the sleep of the children of Sunnyport and the city beyond. Mausoleus was a bad one from the start, the bastard offspring of a sick, inbred family. It was almost inevitable that he took to necromancy and the dark arts. Upon his death, um, his followers laid him in a newly built wing off an old necropolis, an already dark place. Then they lay with him, guardians into the afterlife. But there was no afterlife, at least not a paradise, just on death. I'm old now, the last keeper of the Temple of Light, built as a beacon in the dark. It now succumbs to the dark. There is but one hope. Mausoleus must be destroyed and his evil taint with him. His mortal remains must be cremated in a holy flame. Only when they are so much dust and ash will his cursed presence be vanquished. I tried once before, many years ago, but I'm weak. I found but a single bone but could not retrieve it from the church rafters. May the Builder have mercy upon all our souls. So we saw that piece. We've seen two out of five now. That gives us an optional objective. Your conscience determines Mausoleus' fate. Destroy his mortal remains to rid the world of his undead presence. That's an optional assignment, so it's not one that is required for Ghost, but for Supreme, once it's in this list, you have to do it. And that can't be done without alerting 
um, two fire elementals because when you burn all the remains all the sleeping zombies will explode which means that um, they will alert nearby enemies and um, the fire elementals are not undead so they won't be destroyed I will show you how that is done but we cannot do this there's nothing else in here this room here is a power room where there is a moss arrow up here. I think there is a water arrow in here. Yes, there is. So we're going to go back here and continue. So we are going to head this direction now and uh, moving east closer to the torture chamber itself. Uh, in here are two water arrows. Three water arrows. And there's another moss arrow up here. There's quite a bit of stuff hidden up on the rafters. This is a floating arm, is it? Something that floats. A leg, maybe. But it's not something that can um, that can see you. I don't think there's anything up here. But in here, there's another moss arrow up on the rafters. And I think the same goes for this room right here. Isn't there? Yeah. There is a moss arrow up here as well. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I can't remember. it. If not, then this room is empty except for all these little things here. Three crates here. So that could be useful. Okay. So here there is a zombie, the zombie that we saw earlier. Because now we're right outside the main foyer where we saw that animated script trigger. So we're going to wait for this zombie to go in and leave again. Alright, so in here we have a fire arrow. Two water arrows, I believe, in here. Very difficult to see. But there should be two yet, one there. And then there are two pieces of loot in here as well. There's a hammer. I doubt they'll be needing this stuff anytime soon. I think I'll borrow a few pieces. Hammer and a statue. Worth 75 and 15, I believe. We want to get out there and hide from this guy. I think maybe I need to do this a little bit quicker here. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if he was on his way in or out there. There. So, if you leave through this door from the torture chamber, now we're in the same foyer that we are in earlier, but... And there's the other zombie. Okay. So, as long as you don't enter the other area behind this pillar, that script won't trigger, so you can move down here and not have to cause that explosion. In here is a furnace. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So this is where you would put all the remains of Mausoleus to complete that optional objective. And I will show you that because I have a, a save game. If we move down here, so we are now in the main foyer. There's a lot of exits from this. There are two smaller rooms. This is the furnace room. This is the stairs up to the mausoleum facade. This is to the torture chamber. And then this is the blocked off passage where Mausoleus' family was causing a cave-in. Or he caused a cave-in that killed him. 
But there's a little room here, and then there's a passage to the other tombs that we're going to take next. Now this room is another grave chamber. I think this is the royal grave chamber. And it's pickable. So in here, this reminds us of uh, um, the third Indiana Jones movie, isn't it? The Last uh, Last Crusade. Isn't that where they have to pick uh, cups from a huge selection? But here there are four urns that we're going to take. Two, three, and then the fourth one is on top here. So 260, those were worth um, 20 each. So that lock pick was necessary for us to do. Now there's a secret too, if you, from the vase that has a blue smoke, you open a secret grave chamber in here. And this is the royal chamber then. There is a ring that we can take, worth 100, total 360. And then there is a, the middle candlestick here is worth uh, total of 25. That we have to skip though, because that is definitely emitting a light source, and that's not allowed, and we can skip it, we don't have to take it. So that is would not be excused under any circumstance. So that I'm totally fine with, because you can circumvent, circumvent taking them, navigate around them, but um, if you can't do that and it's mandated by an objective, it seems silly to bust because of it. But this one I'm going to skip. So I know it's a light source because I managed to extinguish all the other ones here and just leave that left and you could see the light down change. This one will reopen the, the passage. And it'll close by itself. I always thought this was uh, some kind of loot to begin with, but it's not. It's just uh, illuminating eyes. So now we're heading into the upper floor of a couple of tomb chambers here. Got caught instantly. And did the same thing again. Here is a goblet in an open casket worth 15, total 375. Now you can move along the upper ledge here. There are doors connecting these two chambers. Now in here is a another piece of loot that we have to skip. There is a diamond, a green diamond you can see, worth 100. And it's sort of teleports between three different locations, but it definitely emits light. So removing that would also be a Buster Supreme, so... We're gonna have to skip that as well. That's the second and the final piece of loot that we have to skip for Supreme. So that's 125 total. Okay. Now over here is a tunnel. I'm going to take that real quick. Now we get to the locked uh, chamber from the graveyard that you have to pick the lock open to, but I didn't want to do that. So you can get into the tombs this way, but I just want to read this scroll. There's nothing else of value in here. I've grabbed as much loot as I could carry, but there is still some left. I'm leaving this note for myself in case I dare to come back. I found a few of the laborers' tunnels to help ease my looting. Funny thing that the workers tend to be the biggest thieves. There's evidence that the hammers were here recently, and I'm sure that they stashed something, but why here? Probably in the mausoleum itself, 
but I fear it's too far, it's far too dangerous to negotiate alone. No loss, my next venture will be the Mystic Soul, and I hear that its worth is that its worth is extraordinary. So this is Adolfo, and uh, you probably remember that Adolfo was a lone explorer that went to the Bone Horde to get the Mystic Soul long before uh, Felix and his crew. So um, it seems like he went here to look for the orb uh, before. So um, this must have been a while ago because the events of Thief 2X takes place concurrently with Thief 2. Although it's not canon, it, it tries to be. Fanon, isn't that what we call it? It's not canon, it's Fanon. So there are a couple of other ways. Uh, that you, you have the staircase here that leads down to the lower chambers, but that is heavily patrolled. I'm not going to do that. There are... There's another tunnel you can see behind that casket, and there's another tunnel down here. I'm going to take this one first. That just takes us straight down as if we took the... as if we would be taking the, the stairs. I'm going to leave that rope here. So we now... No. We have gone through these two chambers, and we exited through a tunnel in the southwest, and that took us into the lower equivalent chamber. So these are the stairs back up again. So we are now going to move north and loot this area before we continue. So this is a tiled floor, a lot more dangerous, a lot more difficult to navigate around, but there are ladders here that we can move up and down using. Here's another diamond, but that one is not emitting any light, so that is okay for us to take. That was worth uh, 100 total, 475. <gasps> Gonna head north, right? Yep. I like the look of these vaults, if you want to call them that. And like I've said several times before, when I record, that's the first time I see the mission with the Necroage mod. I do not play with that until I record it. Here's an artifact, worth 20, total 495. The upper level here is very nice to use because it's dark. Let's actually make a real save. I'm gonna move down now and move into some of these. That was actually the sleeping zombie. Surprising that it... Oh. The drop down over here, then. I just saw my chance and left here. You can sneak in on this uh, south side because its head is on the north. We took a gold goblet. Total 520. Oh, now he woke up. Okay. Okay, took an urn here, worth 20, and then there's a secret. So 
So that was the third out of four secrets, but we didn't get the count for the secret library with the optional objective. I didn't want to pick the lock on that door. Here, all there is is a gold vase worth 100, total 640. That sound there also sounds like an alert, but it's not. here, shouldn't I? Not sure. The light in the ceiling, I guess, that illuminates me too much. Pretty lucky with the patrol here, because this is a. But now we're a little bit more stuck. This is a tight area with two patrollers and a sleeping zombie. isn't it? That he heard. That too. I'm not sure what kind of surface this is. Dirt or something like that? Mud? That was not an alert. Okay. So let's head down into this area. Look at this weird room. A casket with three skulls on it, a red, blue, and yellow. And there's an inscription on the floor. We are part of the rule of three. Many of us have our gaze upon ye. There's a dead archer. And there is a readable. Last will and testament of Brother Brayson. I write this in hope that the Builder will send a living soul to reclaim this letter. I do not understand why and how our expedition came to be, but I do understand that there was no, possible, no possibility of our success. Most of our number were only acolytes, and only two older brothers have been on the field of battle. We came unprepared, and now I have just learned without proper equipment. Our hammers and arrows must lack the Builder's blessing upon them, for the filthy undead kill us one by one. It is my will that my younger brother Seth inherit this hammer from my room in the seminary at Sunnyport. If by some chance someone of our fold receive this message and plan our, to pursue a like mission, understand that the key lies in wait here, in this very room. I am not sure how this ghastly puzzle is solved, but I now know that touching the wrong skull brings certain death. I stood too close as my arrow stuck, struck the blue one in the middle, and now I lay fatally wounded. It is doubtful that any of us will live beyond this day, though it is clear that Onam intends to use us to the last man to accomplish his goal. I fear it is the mercy of the Builder that I meet my fate here, rather than by the horrors of what must surely lie ahead. Okay, so he already used uh, his arrow on the blue skull, so that is not it then, obviously. So let's save, and let's see what happens if we use it on the yellow skull. That was obviously not right. So the red skull is then naturally the correct one. And the hint is that the rule word is capitalized. So the R in the rule. Take that, and these do also not illuminate. I checked that, but there's no illumination from these, even though it looks like it. 
And here's a key. Mausoleum key that cannot be dropped back. And that we are going to need to enter the mausoleum. Okay. We have now moved south. No, we have moved um, east. And we are now, we've turned south, haven't we? Yeah, turning face south. So one more grave chamber. You can see that there is uh, some kind of a mist entity over here. That is something that gets triggered, um, I think, when you take the mausoleum key or when you're in this area. It shows you the way, it hints to where to go, but it's not not an enemy. Okay, it's so another chamber with another plaque. We are part of the rule of three. The four horsemen are we. Find the hidden lever and we shall open a path or two for thee. So the hidden lever is not really that hidden. It's over here. That counts as the fourth and last secret and it opens this uh, chamber here. And here you have four rope arrows. We're not going to need those, and you can't close this. So I'm going to not take it. So we're only going to end up taking two out of the four secrets. Don't need anything else in here. Okay. So this room here looks pretty safe. But it's not. Here there's a sliding wall. That'll squeeze us to death. So obviously we can't do that. We're not allowed to take damage for Supreme, and we're not even allowed to trigger traps. So we cannot head in here, and this is a proximity trigger. So as soon as you cross the line, you can see the sh shade here. This will start moving, and that happens from the other side too. You can see clearly that there's a piece of loot here, a gold goblet. And there's also Mausoleus' right arm, the third out of five different um, parts of his body. But obviously, I want that piece of loot. So how can I get this piece of loot for Supreme? It's uh, worth 25. So how do I do that? So here you have that the mist entity trying to show us the way to go to get to the mausoleum, I believe. Let's see. Yeah. So we are going to need to do something quite extraordinary to get this piece of loot. Um, we are actually going to end up using water arrows in order to push that loot item all the way over to that ladder because you can get down there from above in a different way and then take the gold goblet from that direction. You could alternately shoot it from that side and then take it over here but since we're already here and we're going to end up being on the opposite side later I will do it from this direction. So we need three rope arrows no Three water arrows. That's not a boss to Supreme to use water arrows as long as you don't douse torches. So the way to do this is to shoot one right into it first. And then shoot another one into the side of it. Okay. That wasn't enough. I don't want to use any more than three arrows here. Let's see. That should be good. No. So I'm going to wait for that zombie to, to turn around. So we don't want to shoot this arrow behind it because then we're just pushing it over into the far corner. We want to sort of push it into the wall so that it bounces out a little bit. 
There, that's perfect. And then a third one to shoot it all the way over to the other side. That's perfect. We can get that from the other side. Let's just check if we can get it. Oh yeah. No problem. So then we can leave it there. We've used three water arrows, but that's totally fine. Not a bust. I know that maybe it's a little bit counterproductive to use three water arrows that are each worth 50 in order to get a goblet worth 25. But it is what it is. Supreme doesn't count equipment as value. Only loot. <sighs> We're then going to head back. We're going to climb back up here. Because we cannot pass that area and trigger that trap. that going to take this tunnel. This is sort of a, a secret hidden entrance from this area, and now uh, straight to what's called the Crypt of the Forgotten King. So it takes us into this region. And this is a way to get to the back entrance of uh, that sliding wall trap. And this is a pretty safe area because there's no enemies in here. Sleeping zombie here, and one here. Uh, this is the door to the crypt. Up here there is a statue, kind of difficult to see. Worth 15, total 655. And then this door here we have to pick open. This is a crypt area, another sleeping zombie. So here we have three caskets, a couple of misty statues, a green one and a blue one. And some inscriptions here. Here's a water arrow, by the way. An avalanche engulfed me in earth. Now my eternal sleep is down here neath the turf. Okay. Here's a moss arrow. I am a son of the Forgotten King. My life was shortened because of a drowning. So this one is blue and talks about drowning. That statue is green and talks about earth. So probably, since we are supplied a moss arrow and water arrow here, this one requires a water arrow, and that one requires an er a moss arrow. So the water arrow we're going to use. So that opened this up. That is not a light source, by the way. Or is it? Let me check. Oh. I failed to save it here. Okay. Well, I want to check that. I haven't checked that myself, so... Let's see, where are we here? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, of course, meant should have saved it. But you know me.
I never actually thought to check if that is a light source, that statue, when it is... When it is, uh, smoking blue like that. It's a little bit of a puzzle, but... Check. So how are we going to check that? Well, let's first extinguish this. Oh, you can't extinguish that. Okay. Can't extinguish those. Well, let's see. So we first want to check this one, right? No, that was not a light source. There was no change in my light gem there. That was exactly the same. So that is not emitting any light. It doesn't look like it does either, because you're actually uh, pretty dark here. Uh, it's that one that emits the light. Okay, then we're good. So we are going to use a uh, water arrow on this. And here there is a medallion. And that is worth uh, 100 total. Ooh. Yeah. Total 755. We cannot close this casket. There's no way to do that. And there's also two gold goblets on these ledges. Total 805. Now, you probably guessed it that we can use a moss arrow to open this. But let's read this one first. I am one of the rule of three. Inside my crypt, I hold the sacred relic for thee. Find my son who holds my crystal key. So if we use a moss arrow here... That one will open. Moss arrows are allowed to use for puzzles like this. In here, you can find King Crystal Scepter. So that is the crystal key. And that you're going to have to use here. Now that doesn't sound good at all. It sounds like you're breaking something. But it actually works like a key. So I'm not sure if that would have been a bust. In here, you have King's Heart Ward. Now, that ward is going to be important later on. I will not take it, because you don't need it, and I don't like to use the Moss Arrow, and I definitely don't like the sound of this. But this one can be closed back up, so I think the Scepter just works like a key unlocking this casket, and the sound of the broken glass just is something that's added by the author. I don't think we're actually causing any property damage, I think we're just unlocking it. So, this King's Heart Ward, um, I will skip. But it does give you some protection later on. So we don't need to do anything else in here. We've taken the three pieces of loot that we can take. Okay, we're going to have to skip over this guy. And take this gold goblet. 425, total 830. So now we are headed towards the lava cave, which is right here. The entrance to the mausoleum is up, you see it in the distance there. There are two fire elementals that sort of patrol here that we're going to have to avoid. Now they start lighting up when they see us, when they give a first alert. It's very difficult to hear, but you can see it by them starting to light up. And they are not lit up right now, so they are completely unalerted.
we're going to head down here. And now we can take the gullet. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, use a water arrow to get the piece of Mausoleum's corpse there. But uh, we don't need that for Supreme anyway, so... So you can mantle up here. Now on the ledge down below you can see four fire arrows. Now I don't have a ghost challenge for this mission, but if I would have one it would be to take those four fire arrows for Supreme without getting an alert from these two fire elementals. Now the reason I don't have that as a challenge is because I haven't been able to do it myself. <coughs> and uh, I wouldn't put a challenge in there that I don't know if can even be completed. But I wouldn't say that I've really tried. I would imagine maybe that fastening a rope into the side of the... Fastening it in right there. Something like that. I'm trying to point to it with my sword. And then waiting on the top ledge for them to head south. Dropping down on the rope and then jumping in, taking the arrows and climbing back up before they turn around would be possible. So if anybody wants to give that a shot, you can do so. I would suggest that you turn off auto-equip because you light up when you take water or fire arrows. So, yeah. I can make that a, an unofficial challenge because I haven't been able to do it myself and I don't really know if it can be done. I don't think it can be done, to be honest with you. But it would be cool if somebody could. So here we have a dead monster of some sort. Two broadhead arrows are stuck in him. And then there is another dead Hamrite, and a readable. Brother Onam's wisdom shall be our saving grace, for he seth setteth a plan to scout out the catacombs with the acolytes. By chance there is a way to secure our cache of holy relics in the mausoleum. Our numbers are smaller now than at the beginning of our journey. However, we hast managed to locate the entrance to the mausoleum. The doors are locked, but builder willing. The key lays wait somewhere in the crypts. Mayhap it sits in the unholy... Skull Crypt, where dear brother Brayson was slain by a trap. It feels as if even now some unseen specter doth visit our quest. Looking upon us from the shadows of this evil place, now we sit and prepare for what is to come. Brother Stalworth. So the specter could probably be Mausoleus, that we've seen a couple of times. So this is the entrance door, then, to the mausoleum. Uh, or, to the mausoleum compound. It's not to the actual tower. So we can open up that gate with this lever right here. So that spider, there's a spider behind there. He was just going in this direction. spider here, and then there's another one that headed down this way. We're going to follow him. There's a red spider in the distance that also can see us, so we want to avoid him. arrows. One over there, one here. There's a goblet. That's the main one I want. And then in the spider web, there is uh, another arm, I think. Yeah, Mausoleus' left arm. And then there are two spider eggs. Two spider eggs. We're 
we're going to wait for that guy to come in and then follow him on the way out. So that goblet was worth 30. Total 885. back out here. There's the other spider. We want to follow him up now to the top levels. So up here there is a well-hidden pair of coins. Worth 20. Total 905 and that hits our objective. 900. Here is Brother Onam. <gasps> nice to finally meet you, Brother Onam. hear some other creepy sounds in the background. Coming up on one of the coolest places in the in the mission here. So next to him is a scroll and a healing oil. We're going to read this. Why did Cavador send me? Is the orb worth my life? His hatred of me propels this accursed task to which I have been assigned. He wants me to deliver the orb via a little-known entrance to the cathedral found in the northern end of the sewers. Sewers? Why always sewers? He must want to keep the secret from the rank and file brothers. Why? More of his deceit and lies for which I must suffer. He's said to look for our beloved symbol upon the wall which will mark a door. The orb, the orb. I am so close to the goal I seeketh that I can hear my heart beat louder with every step. I lost more of the acolytes in a bloody battle with one of the undead abominations. No matter, they served me well down there, down here, and the builder shall reward them in the after, all in the afterlife. So that was probably the guy that we saw with two broadheads outside the main entrance. We would not be lost uh, here if we had the map that I was promised by Cavador. When I went to get it from Arifax, the idiot insisted that it would take several weeks to find it. No doubt another tactic set in motion by Cavador to destroy my ambitions. Great horror hath visited us in this place. The crypt of the heretic Basmus proved most difficult to breach. Meaning to exhume the orb from the sarcophagus, several of the stronger acolytes did hammer away at the lid for some time, making a ghastly amount of noise and discord. No sooner had the acolytes recovered the orb itself when we felt uh, about as an evil wind and foul voices sounding throughout the chamber. A hellish apparition appeared before us and snatched the orb straight away from my own hands escaping the valiant efforts of the acolytes to stop it, and ran forthwith into the heights of the tower, hurling fiery magic as he retreated. We now rally our thoughts and remaining numbers in the hopes to muster our failing courage forward into the tower. The builder be with us. Ahead lies a conundrum. No sooner hadst thou sent a scout into the tower than didst the great iron door slam shut behind him. The brave acolyte ventured a bit further, but returned quickly pounding on the doors and screaming of accursed statues bearing an evil, wel evil welcome, an unholy flame which leaps out to consume the living. His words were strangled out by a malevolent cackling before I could discern the rest. I suspect the old priest Ketamine was right, and there must exist a ward object to ensure a safe passage. That's the one that I showed, the king's heart warb. ward. How else would Mausolea's followers have laid him to rest? Clearly, we were ill-informed of this, this challenge and are suffering our grave oversight. I am alone now and growing weak. We hath awakened a corrupt spirit by both our racket and our encroachment into this place of damnation. I can still feel the taint of the specter's va vaporous fingers upon my forearm as he absco absconded with the orb. The flesh around the spot has grown mottled and cold, as if my very soul is leaking out through the wound. I am subjected without relief to a... Uh, cacophony of demonic voices from the tower, broken only by tormented laughter. I have but to steal my nerves and wait for the end. 
The noise of footsteps and rattling chains is maddening. May the Builder curse Cavador for this debacle, and see my courage to reward me accordingly. Hmm, a secret entrance. That'll come in handy later. Alright, so... We checked off finding Brother Onum, so the only thing we have left to do is find the Orb of St. Basmus. So I wanted to head in here real quick, because the spider is on his way back up again. So this is then the area where they uh, got the orb first, and um, this is then the tomb of Mausoleus. Here lies lieth St. Basmus, so not Mausoleus, uh, St. Basmus. The heavens are now his forge, the stars his anvil. So here's where they have tried to crack it open. In here is a hammer worth 75. Back here is a statue, also worth 75, I think. And, um, yeah, and then there is a, another piece of loot up here. A statue worth 15. In order to get back here, back down, I still get the arrow. And the best way I've found is to shoot a rope in like that. And then grab it. Okay. I'm supposed to land on that, but I guess we're fine. Mausoleus. This is Mausoleus's tomb, then. So this is where we can use the Mausoleus key to unlock it. However, remember the readable that this door closed automatically afterwards. Uh, we are supposed to leave... Oops. We're supposed to leave through the broken window that we saw from the mausoleum facade um, earlier. But there's a problem with that, so we want to actually be able to leave through this door. So we have to block this door from closing on us. And that we can do by dropping the only healing oil we have. Wait. Oh. When I played it last time, the, uh, this one relocked on its own. Last time I played it, when I locked it, or when I unlocked it, it relocked again afterwards. Because we don't have the key anymore, so we can't relock it, but it relocked on its own, so that when these doors closed, we couldn't open it. So that problem seems to, seems to have been removed. I am playing the Necro Age version, but there shouldn't be any difference in the mission itself. So that is certainly strange. Okay. So then this door won't be locked, but we can't lock it because we don't have the key anymore. And we have to get in this way. Okay, I'm still going to block it just in case it relocks because I don't want to be trapped in here. And this is the the archer that was mentioned by Onam that he sent in as a guide or a scout. Here is a broadhead arrow from him, so he is dead. So we are headed into Mausoleus' tower here. So let's make a real save. And we have... 1,070, that's correct. Okay. Okay, so... Here's a guy. read this first. In life as an undeath, we give thee our obedience, Lord Mausoleus, adept Xantroch, Phlebius, Montrox, and Zulius. Zulius. So, these four adepts, or guardians, if you want to call it that, are these uh, haunts. There are four levels to the tower, 
this being the first one. And there are four of these. Uh, I'm going to call them haunts. They're not haunts, obviously, but guardians of some sort. So there are only four listed here. There was a fifth one, and that was the one that we saw dead out by the by the outer gate with the two arrows stuck in him. So four floors. Um, each floor is circular like this, and each floor has loot. And each floor has a statue in the middle. Now, you can see that there is a, a halo or an orb mist thing floating on top of the statue's head here. Uh, there's one of these statues on each floor, and each statue has one of those. Uh, those misty, glowing things are actually... They function like cameras. I didn't realize that the first time I played this, but they do function like cameras. And I believe they are rotating, but it's impossible to see what direction they're pointing in at any given time. But they are rotating. And um, they can see us, and they have alert levels that are similar to cameras. They don't give first alerts, but they do give a sound that indicates a yellow second level alert, and uh, it sounds like they're almost arming a turret. Let me actually do that so you guys can hear it. Okay, it was difficult to get that now because this room is pretty dark. They're not nearly as sensitive as cameras, so they're pretty easy to... to, to Get around. There, you heard it. Now it armed. I'm not really sure why this one isn't firing. They're supposed to be shooting uh, fireballs at you, but I think you need to be very, very lit up to be shot at. But that sound right there, we don't want. That means that we get caught. That's a second level alert, and then when they shoot, that's third level. Now, if you have the King's Heart Ward that we saw earlier in the coffin, all of these cameras, or these misty, I'm going to call them cameras, all of those cameras disappear. And there was a readable that pointed to this ward being a protection. So it's not really a protection, it's just a scripted disappearance of the cameras once you have the ward. So that gives you the protection because you don't have to worry about getting seen by them. Um, but it's pretty easy to get through the first two levels. The third level is a little bit more difficult. Uh, once you know that they're cameras, you can deal with them as such. So um, we're going to do that right now. And there are four guardians in total. There are two that travel between the bottom two levels. And then there are two more on the two upper levels. There's one of them that's stationary. The two that come down here, one of them stops and one of them just turns around. So this guy stops. They have pretty identifiable first alerts. They always do a scripted search maneuver at the end of their patrol there for those that are stationary. <laughs> These windows here. Looks like they're very lit up, but they really aren't. There. Let's see if I can get up here. So here's the second floor. We took a statue worth 75. This floor is tiled. In the middle, all floors are, but this one is a little bit different looking, but it's still tiled. And here we have a second room, a little bit bigger, with three pieces of loot. The statue um, was worth 75, that's 1145. So here, if you sneak along the edge here, the cameras luckily can't hear you, so we're fine here. Take the urn here. It's worth 20. You can hear the zombie outside, too, because there are some 
windows that are broken, I don't think, on this floor, but... Now, the major light sources in each room are these candles on the sides. So we want to stay in the middle of those. So we can just walk straight over to the statue here, and we should not get caught. Now, in my original run from 15 years ago, I thought that you needed the ward to get in here, because I got caught the first time, and I thought that you inevitably got caught every time you entered the room. Uh, but you, you're not, so you don't need that ward. And back then, it was actually disallowed to use any moss arrows, uh, whether it was for a puzzle or not. So I thought I had busted, or I had busted, based on those rules, because you need to use a moss arrow to solve the puzzle to get the ward. But that has since been changed. So that rule is now, it's now allowed to use moss arrows if it's for a puzzle. It's just not allowed to use moss arrows on the floor in order to make less sound. But as it is, we don't need the ward. At all. But I didn't know that until I played it this time. So we took another urn and then we can take this statue. are worth 20 and the statues are worth 25 no 75 so we have 12 60 now so this is the second level the third level is more difficult but I found a method to do it it's more difficult because one of the haunts are stationary up there yeah this one has a whole lot can't actually get caught by the zombie through the window here. So now it saw us and it shot us. So I was a little bit too careless there with... How my path went. You should go straight over here. As long as you creep strafe or creep walk like this, you should be good. You shouldn't be too lit up there. The can that was the first alert. You heard that. Gave a distinct howl that's different. I think that one was one too. I look down, I lower my frame rate, and I won't click my shoes as much. Close to the camera, you're right underneath, and they can't see there, just like actual watchers or cameras can't. to the other guy there. Just wondering when he would come back. Is this is the stationary guy. I don't think it is. This. Okay, up here some debris and remains here. A green base, worth 50, total 13, 10. There are three more pieces of loot in this room. And this is trickier because it's more lit up, you can see that. 
this is just the only stationary haunt. And he faces two directions. Southeast. And northwest. And then you have this guy too. And he stops at either end. Creep out like this, straight out. See that there's a candle there, candle here. We should be dark. We should not get spotted here. So I couldn't really see that from the shadow line on the floor. The first time I played it, so it took a little while for me to find this. If you go out like this and move around, that's not an alert, by the way. First time I played it, I thought so. That, the camera noticed. That vase is worth 100, total 1460. guy needs to turn around. Why is he not turning around? I don't like this. Seriously, hope there's no, like, being stuck here. Can I go around here? No, I cannot. hammers, two pieces of loot there. Let's wait for him to leave again. Those are worth 75 each. That's 1660. This is the top floor. Okay, there's also a readable here. 
Mausoleus Family History. Mausoleus Journal. Winter, year of the star, 1543. It is done. Their screams still echo in the stone. I shall miss her in my own way. Why could she not come to love me? Was my commitment not shown in the way I took the head of her petty thief husband? Did I not offer to have her brat daughter looked after by the village spinsters? She could have had everything. No matter, now she, now she will be down here forever, within the stone walls that shall soon, shall soon be my resting place. Okay. Alright. So, this is the fourth floor. Now what happens when we try to enter that fourth floor is this. Mausoleus' ghost appears. He flings three skulls at us. Which is a trap. And that alerts these two guys to hunt mode. So that we obviously can't have. We are basically stepping, crossing an invisible line here that triggers a trap. Um, and uh, our action here causes them to be alerted. So that is not allowed. So we have to find a different way in here, basically. It is unavoidable to uh, trigger that. And there is another way in. And that is through that broken window. So we have to get in there. And... Okay. To do that, we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the mission and make a stack to get in there. It's the only way we can avoid that bust. And since this mission, in my opinion, is Supreme Ghostable, then we want to do that. So the orb is in there. Show you that, I guess. I can do that. It's up there. Hang on to see <laughs> Now you definitely saw those shots. They in the first. Is the, what level are we on right now? This is the second level, isn't it? Are we safe here? There we go. This is still uh, unlocked. Not sure why that is and why it locked last time I played it. But So we are now done with everything except for the orb. We have one piece of loot left too. Yes. So... We have to head all the way back at this point.
so that we close this. We want to head back through the torture chamber then. So in order to make that stack, we're going to have to grab two of those crates we saw in one of the storage rooms there. Very good timing. So we are going to need to grab then two of those crates and put them back afterwards. We can bring them both with us up here. This is what I mean, the doors closing is a little bit annoying. there. We don't need that. Good. Good timing. Alright. Let's see. up here, this is where we want to get up, right? We can 
drop one of the crates right here and then head back to get the other one. Decreed by Lord Mausoleus. Off with his head. <laughs> and in here is his head. That was in there before this too. So we didn't change anything by triggering that script. Uh, so that was Mausoleus, and then his. I don't know his his. It wasn't his wife, it wasn't his girlfriend either, because she didn't want to be with him. Um, so I'm not sure. It was somebody that he had feelings for, apparently, that didn't want to be with him, that he then killed and killed her husband first. Quite an evil guy, to tell you the truth. Over here's Silver Nugget. And that is the last piece of loot, 1710. And uh, that is max for Supreme. You can get 1835 in the mission. We've skipped 125. That's required to be skipped for Supreme. We now need to go back and get the second... crate. is over elsewhere. Dark, I needed three crates, but a new dark two, and we also have to do using the healing potion we have is enough. Then. There's the other zombie too. This mission really gives a good feel of dread and isolation. Uh. Okay, now we can get to work. So this shouldn't be too, too difficult if we just... Drop and jump. And then we do have to use this healing oil. And we should be able to get up there pretty straightforward. 
There we go. Then we can make a real save. Now this last room here isn't too difficult either. We just have to sort of be lucky and not get caught by that camera when we go in. Which we were not lucky with right now. So then we just have to reload and wait a couple of seconds. Try to go right away. <coughs> Cannot. <coughs> there. A little bit loud falling down, but it's stone if you go straight down here and it's dark. This is tile, so you don't want to land on that, but he did not hear us there. You can see the orb up there, and you can see Mausolius' skull, um, or his head, is on that casket. That's the fifth and last piece to his body if you want to destroy them. So the way I've found to do this, which is pretty reliable, shoot a rope arrow into... the side of this one. Should be able to climb up. <gasps> Unseen. <sighs> there. If we then shoot the same arrow into this area, should be able to grab the orb from here. Now the orb is also a light source. So both the crystal and the orb, you can see that our light gem responded, are both <coughs> light sources. That he heard. So I'll discuss that a little bit more after I get through this. And of course, I would like your guys' opinion on if this is a bust or not. way to get down. So now we checked off the main objective. Is to not go here. <gasps> but go here. Drop onto the casket directly. Just have to be lucky here. I gotta wait maybe two or three seconds here. I think I'm still on the wrong side of this. I think I should be over here. Here, and then it's just a matter of running out successfully. <sighs> Can't do that. We gotta sneak out and land on the ledge. There we go. That's the orb taken without uh, getting spotted by that camera and without needing to take that ward. So, 
is taking the crystal and the orb um, a bust for Supreme. Um, I have recorded this mission in a couple of installments, and since my discussion for the crystal, I have talked a little bit with um, Peter Smith, him and I. He, he's one of the original uh, writers of the ghost mode, um, and him and I are in contact pretty regularly about uh, possible clarification to the ghost rules. And based on that discussion, I, I think that I don't think that this should be a ghost or a, a supreme bust. It wouldn't be a ghost bust because removing light sources is allowed for that mode. But for supreme, um, if you think about, there is a rule in the interpretation section of the ghost rules that talk about the objective in Kidnap in Thief 2, where you are to kidnap Cavador. That objective doesn't explicitly say that you can blackjack him and deal damage to him, but it's implied, it's heavily implied, because in order to kidnap him you have to pick him up, in order to pick him up you have to have him unconscious first, therefore you have to blackjack him. So that's such a heavy implication that it's allowed, therefore, to blackjack him and deal damage, which isn't allowed even for a regular ghost. So, wouldn't you say that there's at least the same implication, maybe not even stronger, that when there's an objective to take an object, that obviously you have to remove it from the environment. The only way to take it, to put it into your inventory, is to remove it, and therefore also obviously remove the light source that it has. So, to me, it's an inherent and programmed, scripted, if you will, it's not really scripted, but it's um, an implemented programming device by the author to choose to make it a light source. And it's obviously implied by the objective that you are going to take the object. And if it has a light source, you will obviously have to remove that because you have to remove it from its surroundings. So I'll leave it at that. It doesn't really matter. If it's a bust, it's a bust. If not, it's not. It's not like it has any intrinsic value per se, you know, to say if you can ghost the mission or not. I've ghosted as much as I can and that's it. Saw me through the wall there. So all we really have to do now is get these crates back to where they belong. That is required for Supreme. Was that a bust? I can't, couldn't tell. That is definitely one. So yeah, very good mission. The next one in this campaign is the Art of Deception. Where we are... Re 
where we are revisiting the streets. And, um... I think maybe he could have alerted to me there, I'm not sure. <gasps> We're revisiting the streets, and uh, also the Hamrite Temple. From Question of Knowledge. That's also a good mission. Not as good as this, I think. I think this is the best one so far. But there's a few very good ones coming up. But I don't remember. I played the Art of, Art of Deception uh, just before recording this one. I played through it. And I do enjoy that. Uh, I do remember that the brothel mission of Ill Repute and also the Grand Hotel. Are very good. I'm looking forward to those. He could have spotted me there, I'm not sure. Is that the zombie from the stairs? It was. I got caught by that zombie there. I did not hear that. Oh, that reminds me, there's something else I never showed you in this mission that I will show you. Let me actually show you right now. So, I never showed you the elemental catalyst. The second one that we took now actually changes your... Remember the blue one changes your water arrows to ice arrows? Well, now your fire arrows... Oh, we don't have a fire arrow. Let me show you that down in the torture chamber, because there is one. <gasps> it changes your fire arrows into flare arrows. Flare arrows you can shoot, and they remain on impact for a while, and they light up the area. And if you shoot them on somebody, like an undead, then they will continue to deal damage for the duration of how long they stay there. And they will continue to light up an area. But I'm not sure if they make sound or make noise. I gotta check that. We gotta leave this elevator in the topmost position, but that we will do anyway.
put those in here. Next to the other crate there. As such, good. Let me show you. Should be a fire arrow right here. Yep. So if we wait for that guy to appear. See, it changes it to a flare arrow. See, now it keeps giving him, dealing him damage. And this is not the way it looked last time I played. It had more of an animated smoke look to it, but it remained here for a while. So it didn't deal him enough damage to kill him, but that's how they work anyway. It's kind of neat that there are alternate versions of each type of arrow once you get those catalysts. Um, we're going to get one for the next mission too, and that is super cool. Obviously, it can't be used for Supreme or Ghost, but you can look forward to that one. It changes the Moss Arrow. Now all we have to do is leave. Basically, I'm going to show you also what I promised to show you guys earlier. Just a second. Let me go back to... This is uh, a test save that I have. And this is where I have all of the objects. Or the body parts of Mausoleus. So if you drop them in here... There. Close it. Open this and then burn it. And you can see Mausoleus is actually dying here. And we heard the splat. And the sleeping zombie and the other zombies that were patrolling got... They exploded. So all the undead explode. And that checks off the optional objective. But the two... Fire elementals in the lava cave, they will alert to this because the haunt on top of the plateau outside that big gate will also explode and they will hear that because they're too close. So um, I've tried to replay that so many times and I've always found those alert, they're lit up, so that is a bust. So since you can avoid it, you can skip it for ghost if it's in your task list and you can avoid triggering it altogether for Supreme, so it's just safer not to do that. Of course, it will make the path through for you a lot easier, but if it's not allowed for ghosts, then you can't do it. Gosh, mantling is... Like, even though New Dark has fixed mantling, it's so, so difficult to be... to have a reliable experience, especially on sloped surfaces. So yeah, anyway, now we are just leaving. And we're headed back to Thief 2 next. Trace the Courier. Not sure if you guys are looking forward to that or not. But that's the next one on the list.
tight in here. I think he's going to turn around. Yeah. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this one. I know that undead missions are not everybody's cup of tea. I just think it's very atmospheric, and I like the new uh, gameplay mechanics, and I enjoy the story as well, along with it. Okay, where are you headed? I wonder if if the zombie and the burrick here can ever spot each other, because they usually don't like each other. There we go. So, that was a... Was it a successful Supreme Ghost Run? It was definitely a successful Ghost Run. And you can perfect thieve it. Because we did skip two loot pieces that are easy to take for that mode. Total time, 1 hour, 24 minutes, 31 seconds. Found 1710 loot out of 1835. We skipped 100 and 25, we skipped a gold candlestick in the royal grave chamber because there was a light source, and we also skipped a teleporting green diamond worth 100 close by to that in one of the upper tombs because it was also a light source. Pockets picked uh, 0 out of 0, 3 locks picked, no backstabs or knockouts, no damage dealt taken or healing taken, nothing and nobody killed, no iron beast destroyed or disabled. We found 2 secrets out of 4. Campaign totals, time so far, 4 hours, 57 minutes, 15 seconds. Loot so far, 9,001, and no damage dealt or received. So was this a successful Supreme Ghost run? I'm not sure. Uh, we, I did as much as I could. Anyway, the only two possibilities would be the two objectives that are light sources. But since they are objectives, should that be excused or not? Let me know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Doesn't matter. Um... The, uh, the mission is what it is, and um, nothing much we can do about it. The, those are both unavoidable completely. So, Okay, I am going to take um, a little bit of a rest now, and I'll see you guys back for Trace the Courier. And uh, until that time, stay safe. Have a good night. Bye-bye.